Okay. So we've been working on drawing our force diagrams, and so for balanced force model worksheet number two, uh, you had to do all the odd questions, but I want to go back and take a look at a couple of the even number questions that we did the other day. Because we have had some scenarios, and we talked about this during class on Tuesday, that what do we do in a situation like this? We know from Newton's first law of motion that if the acceleration is zero, such as it is in question eight, we got the block uh, being held on by two cables while gravity is pulling it down. We know that if the acceleration is zero, that all the forces should be balanced. But when we look at the diagram that we currently have, there is a force in the down direction. There's a different force going to the right. And then we've got this other force that's up and to the left. And we don't know what is equal to what or if anything is equal to what. So how are the forces balanced when we have three forces all going in different directions? And then for question number four, we had another scenario where this was the block that was accelerating down the ramp. We only had two forces here. We had the force of gravity down and the normal force perpendicular to the surface of the ramp. And so here again, we have two different forces. And we don't know what gravity is or what the normal force is. They're not in the same direction. There's not even a force in the direction of acceleration, which you have to have an unbalanced force in the direction of acceleration in order to make this happen. So we need to figure out how to remedy this and what's going on, what's really going on. So just two little force arrows here. And so if we had this force, this force is entirely in the x direction, so the horizontal. And then we have this force here, which is entirely in the y direction. So we have a force that is going to the right, and we have a force that is going up. Okay. Now, what if we put both of those forces onto a single object? One to the right and one up, and that would be all that we have. Exactly what would that look like? Well, let's change that for just a second here. So here's another force. And so it's pointing to the right, entirely to the right, all in the x direction. But what if we took that force and instead of it being perfectly horizontal, perfectly along our x-axis, what if we pulled up a little bit as well? Like that. So here's our force. And we just changed it from perfectly horizontal to being along some angle to the horizontal. Okay. Well, here's where we start to remember that force, like acceleration and like velocity, is a vector. Force is a vector. And since force is a vector, vectors can be broken down into components. We can represent a vector either with a single vector or with a combination of vectors. So we could represent this force, instead of it being as one force, we could represent it as a combination of forces. Say we have some force that's going to the right like it was originally, and then we started to go up as we began to pull up a little bit. So now we have some force that's in the x direction and some force that is in the y direction. So what we have here is we have our original force or you could represent that same force with force in the x direction and force in the y direction the vector components. Now this doesn't mean that if we were to figure out what fx is, we wouldn't just add it to fy, 
it's not going to equal f because if you're looking at this, you should realize that by drawing in these x and y components, we have created for ourselves a right triangle. So we think of like Pythagorean theorem. I don't want to get too quantitative in this, but in Pythagorean theorem, the two sides equal the hypotenuse. The original force is like the hypotenuse, and our force components are like the two other sides of the triangle. And so if you've got something on either side of an equal sign, they have to be equal to each other. They have to be the same. So that means that these X and Y components of the original force can be used to represent the original force. So how does that help us and what it is that we are taking a look at? So we'll go back here to question eight. I've got in the upper right-hand corner here my X, Y coordinate plane. What we want to do is any force that is not perfectly horizontal or in the X direction, or any force that is not perfectly in the y direction or the vertical, we want to break that vector into vector components. Well, in this force diagram, we only have the force of tension on the block by the ceiling, the one that's going up and to the left. That's the only one that's not purely in x and y. So I'm going to take my force of tension and I'm going to break it into a Y component. And then I'm also going to take my force of tension and break it into an X component. Like that. But I don't like that that X component is up there at the top of my diagram. I'd really like it to be acting on the center of mass like everything else. So I'm going to drag that down here. It's exactly the same magnitude, but now everything is acting on the center of mass. So now what do we got? We have two forces in the vertical. We have two ver forces in the horizontal. And if this thing is truly not changing its motion, then that must mean that my force of tension Y is the same magnitude as my force of gravity, and that the force of tension pulling in the X direction is the same magnitude as the force of tension on the block by the wall. Now we have forces being balanced. We have a force to the left and a force to the right, and if there's no change in motion horizontally, they must be equal. We have a force going up and a force going down, and if there's no change in motion in the vertical, then those two forces must be balanced as well. Once we get to this point, we really don't need force of tension on block or on the block by the ceiling. We don't need that in our diagram anymore, but we leave it there. We're just going to focus on everything that is purely in the X and Y. So what about this scenario? Well, we're going to do the same thing. I've got my X, Y coordinates. Anything that is not purely in the X, Y coordinate plane, we are going to break into a vector. But here's the thing. We're going to do something a little wild, a little crazy. This is something that we do whenever we encounter something on an incline. And it's the only time we do this, okay? If we encounter something on an incline, the motion of the object is always going to be along the incline. So it'd be really nice if our X, Y coordinate system lined up with the ramp. Well, guess what? This is physics line. We can do whatever we want. We're so used to X being perfectly horizontal or Y being perfectly vertical, but in physics line, we do whatever we want. I'm going to turn this so that my X, Y coordinate plane is now parallel to my ramp. So X is perfectly parallel to the ramp. Y is perfectly perpendicular to the ramp. Now that accelerating block as it slides down the ramp is moving 
perfectly in the x direction. It also tells me that the only force that I need to do any vector breakdown on is my force of gravity because the normal force is perfectly in y. So let's move this over here out of the way. And then let's break down our force of gravity. So force of gravity is going to have a component that's coming down like so. So it's force of gravity in the y direction. Besides the force of gravity in the y direction, we also have our x component going like so. But just like in the last problem, I don't like that force vector being down here at the bottom. I'd rather it be on the center of mass. And so I'm going to drag that up, and I'm going to go like that. And that is going to be FGX, force of gravity in the x direction. So if we look at this, what do we know? Well, the block is only accelerating down the ramp. It's not accelerating up or into the ramp. So if my normal force has two of these marks on it, then my force of gravity in the Y must be equal in magnitude. Now, as far as force of gravity in the X direction, there is no other force in the X direction. There's nothing pulling up the ramp. I believe in this question it said that it was a frictionless ramp. That means that all we have is the force going down the ramp. And so that's our unbalanced force. Our unbalanced force is pointing down the ramp. In what direction is the block accelerating down the ramp? It's accelerating down the ramp. So those two things are in the same direction. So that is the short of it, how to modify our force diagrams by breaking down some of those force vectors into vector components. And we can use those vector components to figure out how those forces are either balanced or unbalanced. So your assignment for tomorrow is going to be to go back through all of your odd number questions on balanced force model worksheet two and any questions where a vector breakdown is required, do the vector breakdown, try to identify which forces those vectors, uh, vector components are balancing or maybe they're unbalanced. Uh, add those tick marks in there and then be prepared to discuss those new changes tomorrow.